Huh? What a perfect day. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stephen Kirkland. It is my privilege uh, to be the executive director here at Nauticus, and you honor us with your presence this morning. This is a very, very special day for our organization. This is a very, very special day for this battleship. So thank you all so very, very much um, for being here. At this uh, moment, I'd like to ask us all to rise for the playing of the national anthem by the Fleet Forces Brass Quintet. Color Guard, please post colors. Pray the colors I sir. Color Guard, stand by. Attention, shoulder, arm. Ready, two. Forward, march. Retire the colors. Retire the colors, I sir. Color guard. Shoulder. Arch. Ready. Go. Right. Face. Forward. March. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Please be seated. Once again, welcome. We're so glad that you all are here on, on this very, very special day. In a few moments, uh, it will be my privilege um, to introduce Mayor Alexander, who's going to recognize some very special guests in the audience this morning. Um, I'd also like to recognize some of you um, for being here. I, I have to <laughs> Um, say a debt of gratitude to the Nauticus Board of Directors. Uh, many of you who are here today, thank you so much. Um, our Chairman Paul Frame, our Vice Chairman John Reinhardt, and all of you who are here, thanks for your leadership. It means a great deal. I also have to um, recognize some of the stars of this show, um, and, and they are the team uh, that makes up Nauticus. I am a, a part of a team uh, and so proud to be a part of a team. Um, that's able to, to pull off events like this. Yesterday, as some of you know, we were tying up a cruise ship uh, on the pier next door, and here we are today celebrating the 80th anniversary of the commissioning of the last battleship built by the United States Navy. We get a chance to do all of that, um, and it is this team. It is one team, and I'm so very proud of them. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for what you all do. Um, John Elliker, I believe, is here or is on his way. John, my friend, uh, had a lot to do with this battleship years ago, and John, I'm thankful to you. Uh, and I'm also thankful to Admiral Cavanaugh, Jack Cavanaugh, who's here with us today. Thanks for everything you did, sir, to, to help us get to this point. Um, 
You know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the president of the United States in 1944. And a vehicle, a new vehicle in 1944 would have cost about $1,200. A gallon of gas cost about 21 cents. And on radios all across the country, Bing Crosby and the Andrews sisters were, were top in the charts. And on this day, April the 16th, 1944, the USS Wisconsin was commissioned at the Philadelphia Naval Yard. A special day, 80 years ago this morning. Um, and in a few short weeks, this vessel came down to Norfolk to its home port. And 2,900 sailors boarded this vessel. Remember, it was designed for 1,900. 2,900 sailors boarded this vessel. And in a few short months, they were um, enduring rough seas as they crossed the Pacific as World War II raged on. What must that have been like? You know, what must that have been like? Let's remember that these weren't necessarily trained sailors. They were called to duty from all across this country. They were, they were uh, auto mechanics from Detroit. They were shopkeepers from Connecticut. They were dock workers from Jacksonville. They were farmers from the Carolinas. And they were on board this vessel, sailing across the Pacific with no idea what would await them on the other side. Just imagine that. Just imagine that. Imagine yourselves at 20 years old, 19, 20, 21 years old. Imagine yourself on the superstructure, the tower behind you, standing watch. Now imagine you're in the middle of the Pacific and it's the middle of the night and you can't see your hand in front of your face and you're scanning the horizon for Japanese kamikaze pilots. My God, what must that have been like? What must that have been like? These brave, brave young men, these farmers from the Carolinas, and these shopkeepers and these dock workers, what must that have been like? Eventually, of course, the, the battleship made its way back to Norfolk safely, made its way back to the United States at the conclusion of World War II. And as we all know, I think we all know, this, this battleship served in the Korean conflict in the 1950s and went on um, to be part of the conflict in, in uh, Desert Storm, Operation Desert Storm. We have some of our battleship veterans here with us this morning, appropriately there in the front row. And um, gentlemen, I wonder what that was like. You know, I, I think we all wonder what that must have been like, surely. You know, off the coast of North Korea, the skies weren't always as sunny as they are this morning. And um, in the Persian Gulf, Bob and Keith, I, I imagine the seas weren't as calm as the water is here in this basin. Certainly not steaming across uh, six days, by the way, to get from Norfolk to Gibraltar in six days. This battleship, Norfolk to Gibraltar in six days. Certainly the seas weren't all this, always as calm and certainly these decks weren't always as serene. And so I often wonder what that must have been like. And the truth is, y'all, I, I have no idea. I did not serve. I did not serve. I have such great respect for the men and women who, who do, but I, I did not serve. And I wonder what that must have been like. And you can imagine, I mean, my office is in that building. It's a big office. I've got a window. It's great. I've got one of those chairs that spins all the way around to computer computer monitors. You know, a bad day for me is if traffic is backed up on Bush Street and I'm late to work. So you can imagine for me um, how inadequate I feel sometimes to meet these men who come back to this ship, to their home, their ship. Um, and you can imagine how, how that feels. And I'm so proud to get a chance to meet them. And they come back frequently. Uh, they come back, they come back frequently. And on my best day, I feel so very lucky. Today, I feel so very lucky because I am a part of a team that gets to interpret this ship. I am a part of a Nauticus team that gets to open our doors every morning 
and welcome guests literally from across the world to come see the last battleship built by the United States Navy. And that is indeed a privilege. I promise you that is a privilege and I do feel lucky. I do, I, it, 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 is, it is something that all of us feel every single day. I get to walk the same decks. Today, we're walking the same decks as these heroes walked so many years ago. These uh, young men of un uncommon courage. And that's, that's what we get to be a part of here at Nauticus. That's our role in all of this. Um, and we're, we're proud to do it. April 16th has always been an important day for us as an organization. Of course, it's always been an important day for the battleship. On April the 16th, 2010, just 14 years ago, we had a ceremony in this exact location. And 14 years ago, this very morning, uh, we celebrated the transfer of the battleship from the United States Navy to Nauticus. It was a, it was a great morning, confetti, it was a wonderful morning. Um, and the mayor at the time was standing at this podium and he looked at the, at the battleship veterans that were in the audience and he said, and I quote, to our dear friends, the veterans of the USS Wisconsin, let me reiterate, this is and always will be your ship. I'm proud to say that that mayor, of course, was Paul Frayne. He is now our board chairman. And we have lived up to that commitment that the city of Norfolk promised you all 14 years ago. And we'll do so moving forward forever. So thank you for your service, gentlemen. Thank you. And now it's my honor to introduce the first of two speakers this morning. On January 12th of this year, Vice Admiral John Gumbleton assumed the duties of Deputy Commander, U.S. Fleet Forces Command. Vice Admiral Gumbleton is a native of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and a graduate of Norwich University, receiving his commission through Navy ROTC. He holds advanced degrees from the George Washington University and the Navy War College, Naval War College. Vice Admiral Gumbleton's sea tours include HSL-44 deploying with USS Samuel B. Roberts and USS Vicksburg. Twice serving as HSL-46, he deployed with USS Ticonderoga and USS Taylor, serving as detachment officer in charge and a squadron operations officer. His shore tours, his shore tours include the Bureau of Naval Personnel, Commander, Naval Air Systems Command, Legislative Fellow for Senator John Warner of Virginia, a good man and a great friend of this vessel, Senior Fellow, Strategic Studies Group 34, and Director, Operations Division, Office of the Budget. Vice Admiral uh, Gumbleton's flag assignments include Director of Maritime Headquarters, U.S. Naval Forces Europe, U.S. Naval Forces Africa, U.S. Sixth Fleet, Commander, Expeditionary Strike Group 3, Director of Budget, and Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy and Chief of Staff, Office of CNO and VCNO. I do not know about you, but after hearing all that, I feel like I need to reevaluate my miserable life and think about <laughs> What an underachiever I truly am. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Vice Admiral John Couples. Hey y'all, good morning. It's glad to be here. What a man, what a great day, huh? Beautiful weather. Um, as I was sitting in my home last night watching the rain and listening to the thunder, I was uh, I was hoping that we would have one of these days here when the it just clears out all the muck and you're just left with a, just a beautiful day. So, uh, Mr. Kirkland, uh, you are not an underachiever and thanks so much for the kind words uh, and opportunity. And it's, and it's great to uh, meet Mayor Alexander as we found out we're alums. We went to uh, the same university. So I'm just uh, excited to be here with y'all to and thank the board for all the good work they did setting this up. So, uh, so that's it. I'm really super excited to be here. So why are we here, of course? 
2024 marks the 249th birthday of the United States Navy. And for nearly 250 years, the Navy has served a vital role in protecting and defending this great country. For nearly 50 of those years, this legendary battleship, USS Wisconsin, was called upon and again and again to play its own part. So as we just heard commissioned on this date, 1944, the battleship was prepared for war and a few months later joined Admiral Halsey, famed U.S. Third Fleet aiming its mighty guns at Okinawa and Iwo Jima, of course, during World War II. Later participating in the Korean conflict in 51, provided much needed gunfire support to our troops and destroying enemy command posts, bunkers, and artillery positions. It was during this conflict that on March 15, 1952, USS Wisconsin received its first and only direct hit from an enemy shell. For the first time since the battleship had been birthed at Nauticus, this specific area of the vessels being opened up today and in the future to honor the ship's 80th birthday. Finally, nearly 50 years after it began its proud service, USS Wisconsin left to Norfolk for the Persian Gulf. Serving as a Tomahawk Strike Warfare Commander, the battleship directed the sequence of Tomahawk launches at the onset of Desert Storm on January 17, 1991. <clears throat> in many ways, this ship is emblematic of the men and women of the United States Navy. When called upon by their country, they respond. Again and again, they are always there to protect and defend the United States. It's fitting then that as we gather here in the morning this year in Norfolk, a city that's home to the world's largest Navy base, that we stand upon the deck of this legendary warship and reflect not only on its proud service, but upon the service of those that protect our freedoms every single day. It's my hope that for the next 80 plus years, the Battleship Wisconsin will continue to do what it's done since arriving at Nauticus 24 years ago. For generations to come, this ship will continue to serve as a testament of the strength and character of the men and women of the United States Navy and Marine Corps. So with us in our front row, of course, we have our Wisconsin veterans. And today we honor this fine warship, yet most important is the service and sacrifice of our Battleship Wisconsin veterans here today. And those not present who served aboard the battleship during World War II, the Korean conflict, and again, the Gulf. So here with us from the 50s era, we have uh, Mike Hodges and Russell Brabrandt. And gentlemen, I'm so happy that you could be here with us today. Um, from the 80s and 90s, we got Mike Olson, Kent Ralston, Keith Nitka, and Bob Clark. Gentlemen, all, thanks for coming here today. And so as we reflect on 80 years of service, and we as a Navy stand on the brave and broad shoulders of our Battleship Wisconsin veterans, their service, their naval service, makes me proud to wear the uniform today. Our sailors today are much like those young sailors during World War II and the Korean conflict and during Desert Storm. And as you were reflecting on what would it be like to imagine what it would be on the deck of this ship off of Okinawa or Iwo Jima, I would invite you to wonder what would it be like to be on Kearney, Mason, or Laboon today in a mission and a weapons engagement zone under fire every day since October. Things that have not been seen since World War II, U.S. Navy ships under fire. And they are conducting themselves, those men and women, with courage, with honor and conviction. Very exemplary duty. These times that we see here in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, where the, the Eisenhower Strike Group are performing strikes ashore against the Houthi targets, and these men and women, often, instead of the analogy of uh, waiting for a kamikaze offshore, are looking at a radar return with minutes to make a decision, a tactical action officer, the commanding officer, often seven to 21 seconds on whether they're gonna launch a missile or not. That's combat, that's happening today. Our sailors, your sailors, are proud to do it and are proud to stand on the shoulders of the Wisconsin and the men and women who, who served aboard that great ship. So 
in conclusion, I just want to say that I'm super excited and thankful for the opportunity to honor the Battleship Wisconsin and her sailors and the 80th anniversary of her commissioning. We're grateful to the City of Norfolk and the Hemp and Rose Committee for your support. And your Navy proudly carries on the heritage of the Wisconsin today and every day. We do it. We're proud to do it. When people come to you and say, hey, we're proud of your service. Sometimes I, when that happens, I feel a little sheepish. But today I feel so proud to be here on this deck of this ship to honor you gentlemen and then to reflect and ponder on the great work that is happening today and every day in your United States Navy and your United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Vice Admiral Gumbleton, thank you. That that means a lot. We're we're honored by your by your presence this morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's also an honor uh, for me to introduce a real friend of Nauticus and a true friend of this battleship. He is also, of course, the most passionate and enthusiastic champion of Norfolk. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it's my privilege to introduce to you the mayor of the great city of Norfolk, Mayor Kenneth Cooper Alexander. Thank you, Stephen. Well, look, it's, it's good to be with all of you. I am joined by my colleague on the Norfolk City Council, John J.P. Page. It's always good to have the old mayor, uh, O-S-O-L-E, an endearment, Paul Frame. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Secretary Craig Crenshaw is here from, uh, from the administration, from the governor's office. He is the Secretary of Veterans and Defense Affairs. Sir, thank you for being here as well. Uh, I did see um, Jack Kavanaugh. Jack, thanks for being here. Jack has the mayor's my um, Veteran Affairs Advisory uh, Commission. Thank you, uh, Jack, for being here as well. Mary Miller from DNC. Mary, thank you for all that you do uh, for uh, being here as well. Um, I'll be very brief. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, uh, to our veterans. And as we gather to commemorate and celebrate the 80th commissioning of the Battleship Wisconsin, it's one of the most iconic landmarks that we have here in the city of Norfolk. And it's, the, it's among the largest and the last battleships ever built uh, by the United States. Uh, Vice Admiral Gumbleton, Captain Days, Janet Days, uh, Commander Naval Station Norfolk, thank you for being as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. I also I see members from our congressional delegation, Representative <laughs> Drew Lumpkins in the front. I see Bobby Scott uh, has a representative here, uh, Senator, Senator uh, as well as Congresswoman Jen Kickens. Uh, I just stopped by to say thank you to Nauticus, to the board, uh, for your unwavering commitment to preserving the Wisconsin's history, uh, creating endless educational opportunities for our residents and visitors. On behalf of a very grateful city, I extend the deepest gratitude to our veterans, to all of our Navy representatives for your enduring partnership and commitment to the city and to our nation. We honor, remember all who have served on the battleship Wisconsin. Thank you for your service. Congratulations for reaching this historic milestone. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Alexander. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun. Uh, we are not just looking back today in 1944, but we are in fact looking forward to 2044. 20 years from now, this very morning, we will celebrate the hundredth anniversary of the Battleship Wisconsin. Right now, you are all receiving a Google Calendar invite to be here. <laughs> we know you're very busy people. Brian, we know you're a busy, very busy man back there. We want to make sure that you can come. Um, but we have a time capsule um, here. And the men who have served aboard this ship are going to place some items in this time capsule, and we will open it on April the 16th of 2044. So let me read off very quickly what will go inside of this time capsule. We have this morning an American flag flown atop this ship this morning for the 80th anniversary. We have an original menu, a real artifact by the way, an original menu from the 1944 commissioning dinner. Um, so a very, very special object. Um, we have an original 1940s piece of teak deck that came from this vessel. We have a commemorative coin that will go into the, to the time capsule. 
We have an 80th anniversary hat, uh, a sailor's engraved battleship Wisconsin lighter. Um, thank you, Drew. We have a letter uh, from Senator Mark Warner. Thank you, Senator Warner. Uh, celebrating this occasion today that will go into the time capsule and of course will be open 20 years from today. And lastly, we have um, battleship coffee beans made by the Norfolk Coffee Company. And so the coffee beans obviously are to keep everything else going for the next 20 years inside the time capsule. So what we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna place these items in the time capsule. We are going to seal this up and we are going to lock it in the trunk of my car for 20 years. <laughs> Is that right, Ren? What are we doing? We're, we are placing it in the battleship, deep, deep in the battleship. In fact, in a place where um, guests can see it behind glass, um, but we'll open it in 20 years. So at this time, I'd like to ask the stars of this show, the veterans of this battleship, to please join me, uh, and we're gonna place the items inside the time capsule. Come on up, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the veterans of the Battleship Wisconsin. As we look to the future, as we place these items in this time capsule, let us also commit to carrying forward the legacy of this battleship. It's a legacy of pride. It's a legacy of sacrifice and it's a legacy of service. You have honored us by being here this morning. It, you really have. This is a special moment for us. Um, this is a special moment for this city. Um, and one more time before we adjourn, I'd like to call upon the Fleet Forces Brass Quintet to play a piece of music that I think we'll all recognize. <laughs> Once again, thank you for being here. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. To the entire team, the Nautica staff, thank you guys for making this all look so very, very easy. Um, have a wonderful day. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you.